The prologue levels, with Thrall rallying the Horde and escaping to Kalimdor, don't have any easter eggs that I know of. They seem to just focus on helping the player get the hang of the game and not give them too many secrets to get distracted by. The only real secret can be found using Thrall's far sight ability. At the top of the map are these two scurvy pirates huddled around a treasure chest, which is actually an item called Fat Loot. It's worth 500 gold, and it's flagged internally as the most powerful artifact in the game, but it doesn't do anything at all. It's impossible for Thrall to reach this area, so I guess it was just placed here as an amusing treat for whoever happens to be exploring the map with Thrall's far sight, or using the map revealed cheat code. I also realize that stone golems aren't typical creeps. They're custom units unique to this level. They seem to have been added as a challenge that's not as easy as a mud golem, but not as hard as a rock or granite golem. On departures, there's a tavern and a graveyard overlooking the internment camp so you can see with Thrall's farsight ability. One fun thing I looked at in the map files of Warcraft 3 are trigger comments left by the developers. Though comments are peppered throughout the levels, I found this one particularly interesting. These names refer to Graham Mataraz and Michael Heiberg, who both did programming on Warcraft 3. It was interesting to see communication between the various people who worked on each level and on the game's code itself. More importantly though, I hope this can help us all realize that Blizzard isn't just some sort of single entity that gave birth to this game. It was the work of hundreds of individuals who put it together piece by piece. They even had to put things together like triggers, and this comment shows that even the resources needed to make the maps in the first place weren't all done at once. Because these levels are meant to instruct the player how to play, there were several other comments that gave feedback to the level designers in making the triggers easier or more intuitive to new players, which was kind of interesting. And here are the more notably intriguing and funny comments I found throughout the entire series. I'm not going to read them all, but you're free to pause the video now and read them if you wish. Okay, moving on. This scenario's name is a reference to the song Riders on the Storm by The Doors. There are actually quite a few song references throughout Warcraft 3's campaign titles, and I'm fairly certain Blizzard's senior art director Samwise Didier, who loves rock and metal music, is at least partly to credit for this. There are several lines of dialogue in this scenario's map file that were recorded but not used. Humans. Just what we need. Don't let them get away! Warchief, one of the humans escaped! Damn, he'll alert the outpost for sure. Prepare for battle! These first ones make it seem like there was some kind of trigger to make one or more of the humans in the first encounter run back to their base and come back with reinforcements. That was probably deemed too complex for such a simple tutorial level, so they took it out entirely. I guess that explains why this footman says this. Send for reinforcements! But no one actually does. Our spears be doing no good against those shields. Run! This is an interesting inversion of the lines from the footman in the human campaign about utilizing the defend ability. Defend yourselves! Their arrows won't get through! In this case, it's showing the ability from a non-alliance player's perspective and explaining not to bother with ranged attacks when footmen have their shields up. I hope you help us get rid of those nasty humans. Welcome to the village, man. You all green, or am I just seeing things? <laughs> These suggest that there used to be a troll village that you had to travel to. But in the final version of the map, you just build your own base, and the rescuable trolls are scattered throughout the map. Stay alert. Not all the island's inhabitants are friendly. And finally, there are these lines. Hmm. These wards contain healing power. Hmm. These are the same wards the old troll used to spy on us. They may prove useful. Healing wards and sentry wards are placed by Senjin on the map, but never as items Thrall can pick up to trigger these quotes. This map's aesthetics are just weird. I think they originally used the Lordaeron Summer tile set because as a demo it may have been one of the only tile sets they had to work with, but since Reforged uses Naga units and stuff in the later levels anyway, why not just change the tile set to Sunken Ruins? It's odd to see pine trees on what's apparently a tropical island. These humans, who are supposed to be from the naval nation of Kul Taras, are blue in color as if they're from Stormwind. The Kul Tirans in the later campaign, the founding of Durtar, have the nation's correct green color. Would it have been that hard to change these marines to green as well? No, because the Reforged developers did set that very change up in the triggers, but those actions are cancelled. Why? I have no idea, but it kind of bugs me. This scenario's title is a nod to The Fire Down Below, a 1976 song by Bob Seeger. There are several unused lines of dialogue in this scenario as well. Some of them are just taunts and banter between the orcs, humans, and murlocs. Orcs! Get em! Orcs! I should have known! Attack! Will you humans never learn? There may be other creatures down here. These poor wretches died before they were even sacrificed. You may have rescued the others. 
but I'll see to it that the Exalted One does not go completely unappeased. Free at last! Those fish creatures must pay! You know, it's really odd that they refer to the Murlocs as fish creatures. On the very first level, a grunt tells Thrall this. Warchief, we've discovered a group of Murloc raiders in the nearby river. Murloc fish creatures, Murloc fish creatures, Murloc. Do these look different enough from the Murlocs in the Arathi Highlands that they're completely unrecognizable? Anyway, this line has some interesting assumptions behind it. This gate may lead outside, but we can't leave without the others. Apparently this map used to be laid out with an exit somewhere. This line would have played if you reached it before defeating the Murloc Sorcerer, but this also suggests there was a final quest after that to run to the exit before the cave collapsed. You can find a potion of mana behind these destructible rocks near the eastern lava pool, but that's about it for this level. This scenario's name is an homage to the Megadeth album, Countdown to Extinction. Let's start with just two more unused lines of dialogue. One of the shamans must have found a way to purify this fountain. This line suggests that this healing fountain right here is the one from the first level that you purified in the side quest. I'm guessing if you neglected to do that quest, this line played to explain how it got purified. Probably got cut because... Who cares about that? And there's this line, which is very similar to three other lines used in the Trolling for Trolls optional quest. Hey, you got room for one more, man? There are only three troll groups to rescue, so this fourth line went unused. In the earliest version of this game, way back when it was a demo instead of an actual campaign, it used murloc huts tinted different colors instead of naga buildings, and the sea witch was a ghost instead of a naga sea witch. This kind of changes the implications of the murloc's worship in some interesting ways. There's one easter egg on this level that's easy to miss, a hidden tent on a southwest island. Wade over to it and chop the trees down to reveal it, and a tent contains a crown of kings and a scroll of restoration. And that does it for Exodus of the Horde. Kind of forgettable, but the unused content and the general limitations that went unchanged says a lot about the planning process of this game and how the original developers planned for it to go all those years ago. <laughs> These are just a few of the many easter eggs I've found in Warcraft 3's campaigns and files. Check out my other videos to learn more. Also, I'm currently working on an extended full-length video with all of the easter eggs I've covered over the past few years and more. Like, subscribe, consider membership, yada yada, and join my discord at the link below if you'd like. Thanks for